Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing like a year in review video in which I talk about a bunch of things, not just about pens, also about some other stuff. Of course, pens will make an appearance, but I just wanted to talk about the kind of year I've had and also the things that I've liked, um, the things that may have been hard. Um, and I think we should start with the obvious thing and that is me moving from Europe to the United States. And that has been a long process for me and James. So we started the visa process in 2019 and uh, because of COVID, of course, it took forever for us to be able to like actually sort of finish it. Uh, in April and May, we got some news uh, after a year and a half. Um, and then in June, I had my interview. Before that, I had like a physical exam and I had to get some vaccinations. And that whole situation was super hectic. And in addition, I was, I was still working full time as a teacher, but I also knew I had to go quit my job. And it was like a period of both supreme happiness, but also kind of a mourning because I was leaving behind my family. I had to quit my job uh, and I really, really loved living in the Netherlands. Um, it was super intense, but of course I'm super happy that I did it. I'm now here in the United States and I'm still getting used to things. I came here at the end of August and of course I'm kind of settled. I'm settled into the house. I know the neighborhood, um, but it's still kind of weird being here sometimes. Trying to find volunteer work. Asked at the library a couple of times but apparently they don't really need people which is fine I get that must be a popular spot to volunteer but it's really hard for me to find resources to find like places to volunteer in the Netherlands it's all very like clear to me like okay I can find volunteer positions there on the web um, but here I'm not really familiar with it so that's been kind of a thing and then I'm just used to always working and now I'm not working um, and I kind of miss it like I miss the contact with other people uh, I always had really good contact with my students and I'm really excited to get to that again now we're in Georgia I have to take an exam to be able to teach here I've been working on that studying for that <laughs> actually bought a book um, to help me study there's a super glaring error in the book <laughs> but let's not go into that too much but yeah still getting used to everything um, I like the house I like the neighborhood so that's good and James and I are getting along super well so also a big plus um, always wondered how it would be to actually live together um, but it's been really really easy so thumbs up okay let's move on to some favorite things of this year and I guess I'll start with pens because this is a pen writing channel and one of them is a really really recent acquisition I have them right here so I'm gonna grab the first one and that is the Pelican M600 Ruby Red this was my grail for the longest time I knew someone who was keeping it for me if I ever wanted to buy it or get it he would let me buy it from him and I did and this is just a beautiful pen like, I love this pen so much. And now I feel kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want more pens. Of course, I want more pens to review, but do I want to own more pens? That is like my main question right now. This beauty just makes me really happy. Focus. Thank you. Lovely, lovely pen. Not a super wet writer, um, but I'm trying different inks in it. I'm really enjoying it. So yeah. That's number one, the Pelican M600 Ruby Red. And then this pen, I think you've guys seen this pen quite often because I like writing with it in my journal videos and I've had it inked for a while. And this is the Sailor Pro Gear Slim in the Nebula finish. And it has a beautiful sparkle. And the reason I love this one so much is because of the nib. It has that zoom nib, which means it's super broad. And if you write at a steep angle, it's less broad. If you write at a flatter angle, it becomes more broad. But like my in my neutral position, my neutral writing position, it is very broad. 
and I love it. Um, it's a very small pen, but it is a gorgeous, gorgeous writer. I've never paid as much for a Pro Gear Slim as I did for this one. Um, normally, I don't buy them in Europe. They're more expensive in Europe, but this time I did. I think I paid like 250 euros for it. I am not sad that I did. It is a great writer and I love it. Okay, of course you guys know that I'm big on the journaling. Um, this year has been kind of weird with journaling. I did not find a notebook that I really liked. Uh, I felt really restless in my notebook, so I've been switching around a lot. You may have noticed that in the videos. And I have these phases sometimes in which this happens, but I honestly hadn't like it had been a long time since I had this and I think it's because all the changes happening in my life uh, I just couldn't find like a journal that I was really into or comfortable writing in I, I it's really hard to explain it's not really something that I can solidify into normal reasoning um, but it was really hard for me to find a notebook that I liked or that I could feel comfortable in. I did have a cover that was my favorite. I hope you're not sick of this yet. This is the Galen Leather Folio, the A5 one, and it's just the best journal cover. Um, I still have a notebook in here, but it's lovely and um, I, I just enjoy using this. It just feels nice. It's really starting to scuff up nicely and it's durable. Like it is just a durable notebook cover and I'll be using this a lot in the next year too. Currently in a different cover. Um, also, that's because I'm writing in a A6 notebook, which is smaller as A5, so I couldn't use this one. If I could, I would probably use this one. So yeah. Um, one more thing that I wanna talk about. Well, I have a couple of things, but one more thing is my favorite purchase aside from stationery and paper is my bike. So a couple of weeks ago, I bought a bike. Um, James and I, we have one car, which is plenty, of course, uh, but he goes to work during the day and then I don't have a car, so it's really hard for me to go places. And I was feeling kind of, I don't know, stuck in the house, I guess. I couldn't even go to the store except if I walked, but it would be a half hour walk and it was kind of a pain. So we got me a bike and I'm super happy with it. I basically go places, not daily, but like three, four times a week. I go to the store or I go to the library or I just bike around because I enjoy that. I'm going to show you my bike right now because I want to. All right, this is my bike. I can't actually zoom out more. Um, it's on the porch. I have it tied with a lock to the porch rail. And I don't think it's the prettiest bike I've ever seen, but the color is okay. And then it's very functional. At the front, there's a thing for my phone. It has a lot of gears. And I need the gears because, I mean, I live in Georgia. It's kind of hilly here. Also, this is one of my favorite parts of the house. It's kind of messy right now, but that's a reading chair and a writing chair on the porch. We have a small porch. But it's really nice. This is the neighborhood. Yeah. So, I came here for my bike, but you guys saw a little more. But yeah. This is what makes me be able to travel around. Woo! -hoo. All right. Before I go back to my seated position, I also want to show you my fish tank. Um, I don't know if I've talked about my fish tank a lot. There's been some weird changes in it and I'll tell you when we switch the shot. All right. All right, because we're working with glass, it's kind of hard to see, but this was a three-way divided fish tank and it is now a two-way divided fish tank. Um, it was a three-way tank. However, I had a female that kept jumping over um, the partition thingy, which is really weird because they shouldn't really be able to do that um, because like the partition goes up really high. It should be impossible, but she did. So she has her own tank now. And then I had two male betas in here. Um, this guy 
this guy also decided to be kind of an asshole and jump and they fought so I was very unhappy felt like a bad fish mom um, so this guy that was in here lived lived for quite a while but he got sick we tried to treat him with a bunch of stuff um, but it just didn't work out so eventually I decided to not replace that beta. This is Apollo. The other one was Zeus. Apollo's doing really well. Like, he's happy that he's the only only, only beta in this tank. Um, the Vita tanks, I was really excited about it. Um, yeah, I was really excited about it, but I would not recommend it because honestly, it's been kind of a pain. Um, I've had to move one fish to a different tank. Um, I had fish jump over the partition and then also one of the fish died because they got into a fight. <sighs> no, just no. So now I have guppies in the one side and then also shrimp and a snail and that's it. And I'm gonna keep it at that. I'll show you uh, Persephone's tank. Persephone's kind of my favorite fish. She was the initial jumper that we moved to a different tank. Um, she's a female, but she's such a pretty female. Anyway, let's go look at her. Persephone's plants are still kind of growing in. Um, and she has some algae. I'll clear that up next time she has a water change. But she's my female, the jumper. She's very fast. And she's super fun to watch. And I think she's my favorite fish. But the whole fish tank thing is just a favorite thing in general. However, as I said, Divided tanks, not my favorite. But look at her, she's so pretty. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I gotta watch her forever. I don't think I fed her today yet. So she's like, please give me some food. I would like some of the food, please. Please give, give. I will eat dirt if I must. Okay, back in the stationary position. So yeah, fish tanks, joy in my life. Of course the dogs are also a joy in my life. They're sleeping, and I kind of want to keep them sleeping. The bike, super fun to ride around on. I'm just really happy with that. And then the last thing I want to talk about is books. Now, I think most of you may be able to guess that I'm kind of a reader, um, but I've never really talked about books on my channel, and I kind of want to introduce that to not just make it um, about pens and journaling. I also want to talk about some other stuff, namely books reading. And this year was really kind of a weird reading year, but there are two significant things I want to talk about, and those are two fantasy series. And both of those fantasy series I started reading this year. The first one is the one I started reading most recently, and um, I basically started for two reasons. One, uh, one of my friends really loves this series. Two, they made a TV show and I felt like I needed to read some of the books before watching the TV show. TV show's apparently pretty good. Uh, very different from the books, but still very good. First up is Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. Um, this battered copy is a thrift books copy. I like buying books at thrift books because I don't like paying full prices for new books. Um, apparently this was a library copy? Um, I hope no one stole it. I hope it was bought in a sale, but I don't know. Anyway, I read the first two books of the series and I'm really enjoying it. I can really tell that this is a lot of setup for what is coming, um, but it's not not enjoyable setups. So some books have a lot of setup and it can be kind of boring. Uh, and like as a reader, you understand that the writer, the author has to do certain things um, to actually set up the rest of the story, but this, not really boring, pretty interesting. I'm not going to go into specifics, but of course I was annoyed at some of the characters at first, and I think that is pretty much the goal of the author, um, to make you kind of annoyed. It does get a little better, and I think later on, um, it gets even, even more better, even more better. It's not really a sentence that I should say. Um, but yeah. Interesting start, lots of setup. Curious to see what's gonna happen. So I've read the first two, so no spoilers in the comments, please. But I'm enjoying it, I'm enjoying it. And then I'm also really interested in the Prime TV series of this. Um, 
these other books in the other series that I've been reading, slightly related, um, namely because it's a series by Brandon Sanderson and I don't have these books on paper. I have them on my e-reader and to be fair, I've been audiobooking these. Uh, of course, I walk the dogs a lot, like two hours a day and I love listening to audiobooks when I do. Um, but I also have this on my e-reader and um, it's the Stormlight Archive series. The first four books are out right now, I believe, and I started reading The Way of Kings, I think last year or the year before. I didn't get through it. Um, I did enjoy it, but I didn't get through it. And um, this year I gave them another try and I completely fell in love with the series. These books are not small, by the way, so this is like an average book size, I guess, for um, the Wheel of Time series. And then I think Stormlight Archive is even longer. I think the paper copy I had back in, uh, in Holland was over 1200 pages. And it, like I read the first 300 and I was like, okay, I'm not super into it. I don't hate it, but I'm not super into it. So this year I gave them a chance on audio and e-reader and it was really, really nice. So format does kind of matter. So I don't like sitting around with a giant book in my hands. I prefer the e-reader. Stormlight Archive. So Brandon Sanderson is a really interesting writer to me. Um, I don't think he, he can write sex at all. Um, I don't know why, but intimacy between characters is always kind of clunky. I mean, it's not a bad thing, but it just doesn't really work for me. But the way he set up, sets up worlds and the scope of things within these worlds is beautiful. It's great. One thing I always do note with Brandon Sanderson is that the books always have like a slow start. It's always a lot of world building, a lot of like showing what the world is like and what the mechanics are in the world. Um, and then at the end, there's always like this avalanche of stuff that happens. So the last 300 pages are what I always call the Sanderson avalanche or the Brando Sando avalanche. And that's like basically where it all happens. So there's a, a really long setup for those 300 pages. Now, if you don't like that, if you want it to be like super exciting right away, I don't think these books are for you. But if you don't mind the world building, like the setting of the setting, the setting of the setting, the creation of um, the characters and the um, relationships between the characters. Um, if you like that type of storytelling, I would suggest reading that. And then at the end, it goes crazy and it gets overwhelming and exciting and amazing. Um, so yeah, Brandon Sanderson, slow for the first 900 pages. Sorry about that, that's the dryer. And then the last 300 pages are like um, But yeah, I really enjoy that. <laughs> Some people don't love it. I really enjoy that. And I'm kind of sad because I think it's gonna be like a 10 book series and I'm at the most recent one. So I finished the most recent one. Now we have to wait. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting how long that wait will take. To be fair, Brandon Sanderson does write fast and a lot, so it should be okay. In the meantime, I can read a 14 book series. 14 books. Oh, and I didn't tell you why they were related. So Robert Jordan passed away before he finished Wheel of Time. And Brandon Sanderson, I believe, used Robert Jordan's notes and what he had written to finish the last few books. So there's a link there. Um, but yeah, books, I love books. There's books there and above. I left behind a lot of books in the Netherlands, but I'm building up a collection here. All right, this was a year in review of many things. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was a very chatty video uh, and I like making them and I hope you like watching them. I hope you all have a blessed new year, basically. I don't think this comes online before Christmas. I want to say have a blessed Christmas. I hope you guys had a blessed Christmas. I hope you guys are safe and healthy, that you can be with family, and that you have a splendid, splendid new year. All right. 
thank you guys for watching and supporting me. Uh, I'll continue to make videos and I hope you'll continue to watch me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.